It's official. I got into sim racing and I absolutely love it. Now this video is all about the Logitech 9G23 as well as the G29 wheel. However, what I'm sitting in front of is the Logitech G Pro. And the reason for this is because in the last three months since I started online racing, I got really, really involved in it. And throughout my entire sim racing journey, I decided to upgrade all the way up to the Logitech G Pro. But anyway, just like you, I got a copy of Gran Turismo. As a matter of fact, I didn't even purchase it myself. A friend of mine purchased it for me because I traded with him a subscription to MotoGP, which was worth a lot more, so I felt kind of cheated. But now that I think about it, I got a lot more than he did because I spent a considerable amount of time on Gran Turismo, and I'm really, really grateful that my buddy purchased this for me. If you're brand new to sim racing, I started exactly like you did. I had a flimsy little computer table I bought off of Amazon. I think it was somewhere around 45 bucks. I would say for the first one or two weeks, I was using my controller. And I would probably play like maybe one hour a day, maybe two hours a day here and there. But then I started playing more and more and I started chasing lap times and I got quicker and quicker. And I started doing a lot of research and I noticed that on Amazon, almost 4,000 people on a monthly basis are purchasing the Logitech G29 wheel. And I did some research and I noticed that Best Buy has it for sale. And I went to Best Buy and I think I paid somewhere around 250 out the door. I was feeling so excited. I brought it home. I tore into the box. I put the whole thing together. And as I mentioned before, I started with a flimsy little table off of Amazon. I mounted it on the table and I used my computer chair. Obviously, a lot has changed, as you can tell, in the last three months. But it was the perfect setup, in my opinion. And I sent a cool picture of myself to my buddy. I was like, check me out. He's like, damn, you got your sim set up way before I did. And I was the person who bought this game for you. So he was pretty happy for me and I was extremely excited. And I'm just so grateful and thankful that I started with the Logitech G29. And there are a number of reasons why I think you should start out with the Logitech G29 as well. First and foremost, you're not sure if you're gonna like this hobby or not. Number one, it's extremely time consuming. If you have a subscription to PlayStation Online, then you're gonna wanna play on the sports section, which is playing against everybody else online. And it's extremely difficult, it's extremely challenging, it's very competitive, it's very cutthroat. And I would say the first maybe 50 to 100 of your races are going to be frustrating and it's going to absolutely suck. Number one, you're going to start out at the beginner level. Your driver rating is a D and then your sportsmanship rating is also somewhere in the lowest category. I forgot what it is, but it might be B. Who knows? Uh, it's been a long time. Let's just say that. Currently, my driver rating is an A and my sportsmanship ranking is an S. And I like it that way because the competition is amazing, but it's also clean and fun racing at the same time. Not always, but most of the time it is. But until you get to that level, it's gonna be quite a while. But that being said, Gran Turismo is an awesome game, but not everybody has the time and not everybody has the patience to play that game and grind out to become really competitive online or even just busting out clean lap times. But the G29 wheel, is your perfect entry into the segment simply because you may not have that time. Or if you're someone like myself, I run a business from home, I work from home, and I would say after four or five o'clock, that's when I start putting in a good two, three hours into sim racing, and I really, really enjoy it a lot. So starting out with a G29 or G923 wheel is the perfect segue into this hobby after you've spent at least, I would say, a good 30 to 40 hours using the controller. At that point, you'll figure out if you're interested in spending money on a sim rig as well as a better wheel. Because I'm telling you, this hobby can get quite expensive really quickly. Ask me how I know. But anyway, as soon as I picked up the Logitech G29 wheel, I smashed my lap times by at least 10 or 15 seconds for every single track. I became way better, I became way more comfortable, and everything started to fall into place and I became absolutely hooked. And at that point, I was ready to start my sim racing journey on an actual rig instead of the table and the computer chair that I was using, because obviously it's great, but really it's not something that you can use constantly because you have to move a lot of parts around and you can't just leave it in your living room because 
it just doesn't look right so you got to constantly move back and forth so a sim rig was the ideal solution and the first sim rig that i purchased was the play seat challenge and i specifically like that one because you can open it and close it and fold it and open it back up and it literally takes 30 seconds and when you're done you can literally store it away or put it behind your couch and no one can see it and it's gone. And that's the main reason why I chose it. So stay tuned for the next video to come because I'm going to be reviewing the PlaySeat Challenge as well as the PlaySeat Evolution Chair because I purchased that one as well off of Facebook Marketplace. The PlaySeat Evolution Chair also came with a Thrustmaster T300 RS GT wheel and pedal set. So I plan to do individual reviews for all three of those items as well as my Placey Trophy that I'm sitting on right now and this Logitech G Pro wheel which is creme de la creme when it comes to wheels guys. All that to come in future videos but this is the beginning of my sim racing journey videos on this channel. Anyway back to the G29 wheel. It has two newton meters of peak force and it's not a lot but going from a regular controller to using two newton meters of force it's a big deal because as your first time ever you don't want to get too tired it takes a lot of energy to use a wheel for the first time so two newton meters is absolutely perfect for anyone just starting out however i started doing a little bit more research and i discovered that there's something called the logitech g923 that has something called true force what could this true force thing be and why is everybody raving about it well apparently true force is something kind of like a big deal this true force thing is built directly into the game so depending on the surface that you're driving if you're running off into the grass you can definitely feel that you're running off if your car is oversteering or understeering you can feel that as well every single little texture you can feel on it the only negative thing about the logitech g923 is that it's very noisy a lot of people complain about it but to be honest with you I never cared about it because I have the sound pumping through my speakers and I'm fully immersed into the game. So I'm really not paying attention to any sounds that are coming from the wheel. So that's one negative thing that I could probably talk about and mention, but it never bothered me. And quite frankly, it shouldn't bother you either, especially because most people these days have the sound coming from speakers or they have headphones on. Overall, I would say that the Logitech 9G23 wheel is a significant improvement over the G29. If you're interested in either the G923 or the G29 wheels, links are down below. Now I want to talk about some of the positives and the negatives about the Logitech G29 wheel as well as the 923. Let's go ahead and start off with the G29 first. The G29 at the current moment is costing $229 on Amazon. It's very cost effective. It's way better. I would say 10 times better than using a regular controller. It has three pedals. You have a clutch, you have a brake, and you have an accelerator pedals. So you have everything there. And of course you can purchase an optional shifter and then you can begin using your clutch if that's what you wanna do. Overall build quality with its leather stitching, as well as the way the buttons feel. And of course you have the little center dial, which you can change and adjust your traction control as well as your brake bias. Those dials and buttons come in very handy once you're racing on your sim rig. And I love the fact that over the G923 wheel, it has colored buttons. I'm not sure why the G923 23 wheel has all black and gray buttons but I love the look and color scheme of the G29 wheel and I wish the 923 had those colors as well or something similar to that. Now let's go ahead and talk about some of the negatives of the G29 wheel. As far as the pedal set you probably won't notice in the beginning but if you put some considerable amount of time into sim racing you're going to realize that the pedal set isn't the best simply because the brakes are really squishy and very soft. I prefer that they be a little bit firmer. And when we talk about the G923 wheel, you'll see why it's a significant upgrade. As far as the force feedback is concerned, once again, you'll probably love it because upgrading from a controller to a steering wheel, two Newton meters of force is plenty. However, I found it to be lacking. And this is just my personal preference. It may not be a negative thing for you. And the last thing I wanna talk about is the wheel itself. As far as where you put your thumbs on the wheel, this section here, the stitching is going to rub on your fingers and it's going to hurt quite a lot. So the stitching in that sec in the thumb section is not really smooth and I would recommend wearing gloves. Otherwise, these areas here are going to get very tender after a good 2-3 hour session, especially if you're going to be playing all day long. But anyway, thought I'd point that out. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the Logitech G923 wheel. I decided to upgrade 
for two reasons. My two reasons were, number one, true force. Once you experience it, I'm telling you, it's very difficult not to experience anymore. This is the reason why I stuck to Logitech, and this is the reason why I purchased a G Pro wheel instead of getting something like a Fanatec or a Moza or anything else for that matter. True Force is a game changer. Everybody is saying it, and I'm here to confirm. Once you feel the texture of the road, whether it's going through rumble strips or spinning off into the grass, or maybe understeering and oversteering, you can feel all these things and you can make changes to your car to get better lap times. And for me, it was a game changer. And for me, I don't think I could ever go back. But anyway, the second reason why I chose the Logitech G923 and why I think you should choose it is because of the brake pedals. As I mentioned before, the brake pedal in the G29 wheel is really, really soft. The brake pedal in the G923 is a lot more firm and it feels way better. I'm not exactly sure if it directly resulted in better lap times, but I can tell you that it felt more natural and more realistic to an actual car. The other upgrade, which may or may not be significant, because it's really, really minuscule, but uh, the Logitech G923 is 2.3 Newton meters of force versus the two Newton meters of force that you get on the G29. And of course, you may or may not know this, but the G923 has dual clutch capability. My personal preference is the G923 wheel. It's a much better upgrade to the G29 wheel. And for a little bit more money, you're getting a way better pedal set as well as True Force, which is its main selling points. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I started my sim racing journey approximately three months ago, and I spend anywhere between one to three hours per day playing. That being said, at the current moment, I have over 300 races under my belt. And about 45% of those races have been top five finishes. And therefore, I've quickly ranked up on Gran Turismo. My driver rating at the current moment is A, but that can of course go down really quickly. And my sportsmanship ranking is an S. And of course, that can go down really quickly as well. All of these things go up and down constantly. But the good news is that after 300 races, I would say that I've probably saved about 50 of these replays. I plan to do a lot of voiceovers in some of my previous races, and there's a lot of good stuff that I wanna show you guys. But anyway, stay tuned for tons of videos, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.